in the spirit of uh, the late former Chief Justice Mary Fairhurst, who ran a similar type um, structures work group a number of years ago. She always believed in starting on time and stopping on time. So in that spirit, we're, I'm going to try and do the same thing a little late this morning. So I'm going to do a roll call vote first, or roll call first, because we do have a, this is a meeting of the Board of Governors. So um, Governor Abell. Here. Governor Adwale. Governor Angevel. There she is. I see her on the screen. Here. Thank you. Uh, Governor Boyd. Here. Governor Clark. Here. Governor Couch. Here. Governor Dresden. Governor Higginson. Governor McBride. Here. Governor Peterson. I believe he's going to be late, but he plans on showing up. Governor Pertzer is here. Governor Sayani. Governor Stevens. Here. Governor Williams Ruth. Now we have eight governors, so we have quorum if we need to do any business, but I don't think we'll be doing any business today, except for uh, doing our agenda on the special meeting. But welcome to the first examining the historical organization and structure of the Washington State Bar Association. Ethos of the WISBA is the nickname. Uh, my name is Brian Tolleson. I'm the president of the Washington State Bar this year. And uh, welcome everybody on the screen and here in the room. I hope you can all hear me. Can you hear me back there in the back? No? I have my mic on, yeah. So we might have to turn up that a little bit so you can all hear me. Can you hear me now? I can get this microphone as close as possible. Yes, can you hear you. Okay. Um, I'll try and keep my voice up. But I don't like to shout. So um, I just wanted to uh, go through the agenda. My part's going to be pretty quick here this morning. Uh, we have a number of speakers. We're going to share some brief history of the Bar Association and uh, some of the things that brought us to this point of having these structure meetings. Um, in the next issue of the Bar News, I have a little overview of the whole situation, but uh, just, just to, everybody should remember that back in December of 2021, our Supreme Court asked the Washington State Bar Association Board of Governors to study and make recommendations about the structure of the Washington State Bar Association and they gave us three questions to answer. And so that's the whole idea behind this series of, uh, of meetings. Um, first, have any changes in the law dictated a change in the structure of the Washington State Bar Association? Second, even if there are not any changes that need to be made, if relief were granted in the pending cases and the pending cases we're gonna learn about today, um, what would the new structure look like? And third, regardless of how questions one and two are answered, are there any changes that the Washington State Bar Association thinks should be made for the betterment of the bar in the interests of justice? So that's what the three questions are. Uh, in order to answer these questions, the Supreme Court asked the Bar Association to seek broad input. That's, that's about the only guidance they gave us. Um, so, uh, as I pointed out in my article that will be printed here shortly or published shortly, pretty easy questions to ask, but they're going to be uh, very uh, time-consuming and hard questions to answer, and that's why we're having eight meetings over the course of uh, the next few months. Um, so a little bit about the decorum and format. As you can see, most people are uh, dressed in business casual. And if you're going to attend any of these meetings in person, we hope that you will um, dress at least uh, in business casual. Um, I thought I'd go over real quickly the charter of the Bar Association in the handout of the materials. 
that was available for this meeting today. Um, the charter is, I believe, about page three. And it was approved by the Board of Governors at a meeting on January 13, 2022. So the charter, I'm just going to highlight it, but you can see on the agenda materials, the entire charter. I want to highlight some of the things. Uh, the process is to consider the cost of any structural change to the membership and what effect structural change, if any, will have on one, diversity, equity, inclusion, and any impact on marginalized communities. Two, the regulatory division of the bar. Um, three, WISBA sections. Four, the Washington Supreme Court boards that um, the Bar Association is charged with administering and funding. The access to justice community, the public, and the membership of the Washington State Bar Association. So when we're doing this uh, series of meetings and gathering information, we're going to try and address those number of issues. I look at the charter and I think there might be a typo on the, <laughs> on the, on the numberings. So instead of six, there should be seven things that we're supposed to consider. Um, so we're going to solicit and input active participation from stakeholders, including but not limited to the Washington State Bar Association leadership and staff, the bar sections, committees, councils, the access to justice community, the Supreme Court boards, the Minority Bar Association, and interested members of the public. Um, we hope that this process will be open, collaborative, and respectful in the conversations we're going to have. Generally speaking, the uh, eight meetings that we're going to have are going to be open to the public. Uh, hopefully, uh, we won't need to have any uh, executive sessions, but we may have to have an executive session in order to consider legal advice from our board, our association attorney. The goal, of course, of this whole set of meetings is to make recommendation or recommendations to the Washington State Supreme Court as to the current or future structure of the Washington State Bar Association. That's the whole idea behind this series of meetings. Okay, so that pretty much covers my comments uh, this morning, but I see it says call for comments. So at this point, I wanna open it up for anybody who'd like to briefly talk about anything they'd like to talk about before we get going with the uh, agenda and our featured speakers today. Anybody have any questions or comments or? Governor McBride. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'll just be very brief. It's, uh, I like the title, uh, the breadth of this review, and just for everyone's information, you know, I'm most interested in question three, what's the ideal structure of the bar? I'm less worried about things that are going to be driven by court cases or maybe driven now, which I don't think there are, but I, I do hope we reserve enough time in this process to really talk about ideal structure. Thank you. Thank you, President Thompson. I would just um, mention that uh, <clears throat> I had a large part in putting together some of the agenda items for these meetings. And uh, there's a, a mix of things that uh, we discussed prior on the structures work group, which I had uh, the privilege uh, and honor of serving on a few years ago. Um, most importantly, from my perspective is we hit on many of the issues that we we discussed then with an eye of updating our knowledge of what's happened in the um, ensuing years, but also uh, involvement of the public and the um, sections and the boards and the committees. I hope that we uh, are able to generate a robust discussion um, and, and, and participation by as many of our members as possible, because I think that's 
one of the main objectives of this process. And then uh, to uh, hit on two of um, Chief Justice Gonzalez's questions, one, the backup plan, if we decide uh, we're going to continue as a mandatory bar association, and then two, what's in the best interest of the organization? Um, I don't know that we necessarily limit ourselves to those three questions. Um, I think our discussions could could uh, evolve into different areas as we proceed. Um, so I wouldn't want to see us limited to just those three questions. I think the idea was to do a broad um, review and examination of where we are and uh, what could happen over the next few years. Um, and so I'm 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 hopeful that. Uh, through public participation and uh, in input, and then our own discussions, we'll get there. And one difference that we've made since the original structures work group is we've set aside um, two, at least two full days for public comment and, and coming together and listening to other groups. And uh, that's a little different than what we did before. Um, and I'll be talking uh, with Governor Adel and Governor um, then Governor Clark, now President-elect Clark, about our experience on the Structures Work Group this afternoon. Um, and, and we can kind of talk about some of the differences, but we want to build upon that. Uh, we want to re-explore re it so that members of the public and, and uh, our members can uh, recall what we did a few years ago. And then we want to explore where we are now and where we should be. So I'm looking forward to the meetings and the process. Thank you. Anybody else have any uh, questions, comments, observations that they'd like to share at this point? Ah, Governor Stevens. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And my comment is really <clears throat> directed at Governor McBride. And I just want you to know, uh, Tom, that. Uh, I've come a long way in terms of my view about this. I was uh, in the camp of not no, but hell no. Uh, and I've moved to a place where uh, I'm interested in all three of those questions. And I'm in particular interested in your take on the third. So I'll be looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Stevens. Any other hands up in the room here or in our virtual room? No, yes, going once, going twice. We're gonna be ahead of schedule at this point, which is a good thing, I guess. Okay, um, so we are ahead of schedule, but uh, in the interest of giving um, our uh, speakers as much time as they need, uh, that's a good thing. Um, what I would like to do is, first of all, I'm gonna, uh, the agenda is pretty much set that you see who's gonna come and speak. What I would like to do is um, allow each one of our presenters sort of to all be happy, and I'm sure the executive Dir director Nevin also will be happy to make sure we've gotten any questions that might be Asked, you know, either a virtual hand or a, a real hand, but the, my goal is to have the presenters um, do the order of questions, you know, so they they can when they see the hand up, they go ahead and um, identify that person and allow that person to ask whatever question. If that's okay, is that okay with everybody? So that we'll have like a couple people here in the room uh, looking at the screens and looking in the room to see if people are asking questions. But I would like the presenter, uh, each one of the presenters to kind of moderate their own uh, presentation. 